Welcome to an Alaska homestead where we're becoming more self-sufficient on a remote island in southeast Alaska. I would film the other side, but I was, it just had butt in my face. Hold on. <laughs> Welcome everybody. I got Captain Funk here. We're going to talk about the video that never happened. Sweetheart oh, Creek. It's a great day. It was a great day. But the main camera, the, the SD card was corrupt. And so I only had some B footage. And I'll piece in some of that footage from time to time. But we just want to talk about it and let you know that next year we'll be going back to Sweetheart Creek. Every year. And it's going to be epic. It was my first time cast netting, right? That's, that's yeah, that's the majority. Some people use dip nets. I Those guys didn't have any luck, though. I never see the dip netters get them, but yeah. they're out there. So let's start off. What time did we get together? Uh, our departure time? Yeah. Let's see. We met on the beach here at the cabin, uh, 2 a.m. in the morning, so pitch black. Pitch black. Yeah. We yeah. left through the south end on radar so we could see where we were going. Luckily, his boat's got radar, so. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh, Tanner. So we've got Gunner, Tanner, and Heidi here. So if we get some dog interruptions, please excuse them. <laughs> but, anyways, how far, how, how long of a boat ride is it from here to Sweetheart Creek? That particular morning probably took us. Solid two hours. Yeah. Yeah. And we got there pretty much right at the crack of dawn. Like yeah, I the think. The sun was just coming up. I think once we picked everybody up off the beach here, we were probably pulling out of here about 2.30, 2 2.15. Yeah. So, yeah, we got down there four-ish. Got the dinghy down. Got to shore. So we had to take the dinghy up into this creek to get to where the fish are. And what was great about that one, too, is... Uh, we hit the tides right. That's why we left so early in the morning, because we wanted to ride the tide, the high tide up that that creek slash river. I just thought we wanted to be there first, which we were not. Well, we wanted to do two things. We wanted to be there first, <laughs> which we were not, and we wanted to utilize the high tide on the river. Yeah. No, we we got there, and I never cast a net in my life. And literally, I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little intimidated because I thought all these people were gonna be throwing these beautiful spiral circle nets. And and um, I, was, I was basically just throwing a big wad of net, like a big net ball. You should have just thrown your bucket with it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't have done that. It's difficult, man. Is it works your shoulder out? It's, it's a workout. That's it, true. It is a workout, especially when you're wading in the water because you got to keep your net up out of the out water. Of the water and then yeah. you got to throw it and hope it spreads out. And half the time only a little slice of it half oh, a, you get a half a spiral you get going. a half a spiral going but when you're on the fish and you can see the fish in the water and you can get the net to circle out and spread out that's when you catch the fish so there was a couple there was a team what three or four guys and a girl that were fishing in the good spot and literally within an hour they had limited out right and the limits 25 sockeye per person Correct. per day Per day. So they limited out. So they said, hey, you guys want this spot? And we were like, yes. So we moved. And, and, and within an hour of casting, we were also getting a little bit better at throwing a half circle, at least a half circle. So we moved over to the uh, to the good spot where the fish actually were. And we really started landing fish then. We did, and with the polarized sunglasses, we could see into the water a little bit. I didn't have polarized sunglasses. And you could see where the fish were at. And <laughs> Dude, we, we didn't have anything. Remember, as soon as we got there, 
the the no seams were just like on oh, us. Yeah. And we were like, did anybody bring any bug dope? And no. We were all like, no. Nope. We then, got a gun though. <laughs> Anybody bring sunblock? And we were like, no. It was all in the shade, though, so we didn't need right. sunblock. But, yeah, the, the no CMs were pretty bad. Then. They were bad. You always want a little bit of breeze, but eh, it was not breezy at all. No. So, anyways, we got in the spot and started casting and started catching fish. And he was on, like, a little lip. There was, like, a lip and then a little, what, 10, 12-foot cliff. Yeah. And Steve Olmstead was up on top of that. And then... Down this V on the other side was a little flat surface, and I was standing there. And that's where all the fish would get and thrown to. Right, at the base of the waterfall. Yeah, and I would clubber them and try to put them on a stringer. So the last two years, I've kind of done Sweetheart Creek as a team event. And i have it's much easier when you have multiple people. You yeah. Know, you, got, you find out who can throw the net, and you put him in charge of throwing the net. And then you get a person in charge of getting the fish out of the net. And then you put a third person on putting the fish on the stringer. And you always want to make sure to tie the stringer off. Dude, we, we, <laughs> we how got, many fish do you think was on Houston, the, we got a problem. <laughs> man, he threw over a bunch of fish. And we probably already had, what, 25, 30 fish on that stringer? Oh, it was heavy. And so I'm dealing with fish and, and loading fish on and, He's over there standing right next to me, and I look down, and the one end of the stringer is tied to a, a branch, and the other end of the stringer has disappeared into the water. Yeah. And I look over to Steve, and I go, I go, Steve, I go, we got a big problem. He goes, what? <laughs> I go, the other end of that stringer is in the water. <laughs> so, luckily. Luckily, you tied a knot off at the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> But it got hung up on the gills. On the gills, yeah. Because what we were doing is we put the stringer through the mouth of the fish. And, yeah, we got lucky. We, got really we, lucky. we pulled gently <laughs> and pulled that whole stringer back into shore. and We would have lost a lot of fish. Yeah. We would have lost half of them. We would have just seen fish starting floating <laughs> up to the surface. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, there was that. The other cool thing about Sweetheart Creek is, and I had video of him casting his net with with a, with a big brown bear right behind him because you're basically fishing with the bears. And, you know, you'll know when the bears are there because, well, I don't know, how many people do you think was fishing at any given time that day? I think by the time we, I mean, the river system was full by the time we left. Uh, there was probably, what, 15, 20 boats out there, and each boat's probably coming down with, Two to three people, if yeah. not more. So 60, 70 people? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was definitely a full... The reason it was full is it was great weather. Yeah. And, you know, the weather was calm. So it's a bit of a run. You need calm weather to get there. And that's why we got there early to beat the crowds. Yeah. But, like he was saying, when there's a bear, the whole, the whole river system with the people... Starts blowing their whistles and hooting and hollering. And, yeah, get out of here, bear. Yeah, and everybody knows there's a bear coming. And then that mama bear came down with her cubs. And when we were like, oh, that's trouble. Yeah, that's when we were uh, processing on the bank. Yeah. Um, we were cutting the fish up, uh, gilling them. Um, when you go to Sweetheart Creek, you have to clip the tails um, per Alaska fishing game. So they can't be resold, I believe is why they do that. And out of the corner... My left eye, I saw something, and it was a mama and two bears, quietly, non-aggressive, just walking towards us. So the three of us, we stopped what we were doing and started hooting and hollering. And the mama just kind of looked at us like, you're good, you're cool, we got this. <laughs> but she took her cubs up into the woods. We are just trying to pass through. Yeah, just yeah. passing through. So there's there's competition there with other fishermen and other and other non-human fishermen. They're 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 trying to get fish just like like we were, <laughs> and they're quiet. Oh, dude! It's amazing how quiet they are. For how big they are, yeah, they just move swiftly and they calmly. don't even break a break a twig. Yeah, it was amazing how quiet they are, and they just show up. There's a brown bear right there. And what do you think we saw? Six, seven different bears come down. To, at, at least, yeah. To, and quite consistently throughout. Yeah, multiple throughout, times they would come down. Yeah, throughout the morning for sure. So 
they come down and they kind of get angry at you. Well, not angry, but they just look at you like, we see you. They're, uh, They're like, just fatigued. Let me, yeah, They're like, like, just let me get my fish. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get in on this action, too. <laughs> but anyways, it probably within two hours, we limited out. Yeah, so there was three of us. There's, yeah. So that was about 75. Um, we caught 75 sockeye. And then Steve kept some pink salmon as well. 12 pink. And then you had that monster um, bycatch. Somebody caught. Somebody caught a monster, monster king salmon, which is legal. That's legal. And I was surprised to see it in the river system. Well, I was too. I'd That's never, a... I'd never heard of that, but it got hung up in the net and... It was a great fish. I mean, you're in the wrong spot, buddy. <laughs> I'm glad he. I'm glad he came through. <laughs> so we didn't. Um, Steve Olmstead processed his own fish. He um, canned his own fish. Okay. I think didn't he? Yeah. I or think at least it, the pinks. I think he did some of it. Yeah. And and we he said that there's a uh, a. What do you call it? A cannery, I guess. Uh, a fish processor, processor in town. Yeah, a couple of them. And so one of them has a good uh, recipe, and so we decided just to to follow him and dump dump our fish off because that's a lot of fish. I mean, he you didn't have yours weighed, but I got the weight on mine. Yeah, what was it? So just the fish that I kept, not his fish, not the other Steve's fish. My fish alone was 113 pounds of fish. That's a well, lot that, of fish. Well, that's going to be, I mean, so we're right there. We're, yeah, you were all in the hundreds. Wow. That's a lot of fish. That is going to be a lot of fish. So mine, I, mine was a little more because I had that big king. You had it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm having some uh, smoked, hot smoked, freezer packed. And then I'm having fresh fillets, freezer packed. And then I'm doing two sets of jars. I'm doing regular hot smoked jarred salmon. And then I'm doing jalapeno smoke sand we went the same way with yeah, some jalapeno, so, so i know my wife mandy she she loves jalapeno so we're pretty excited about that so um yeah so i i mean honestly i never i never been dip net fishing because this is all i mean i came up here new to fishing new i'm a, a semi city boy and so this was all new to me so my wife's dad kind of taught me the, the fishing aspect of how to do it here in Alaska. And going and doing this cast netting was, was amazing. I mean, I literally was just had the, a, the time of my life. I had so much fun that day. And let me tell you, you don't want to be, you want to be the caster. You don't want to be the fish clobber or the stringer. Because I was down here, Olmstead was up here, and... It, after the, his net releases the fish and it gets down in all that fish slime and he starts pulling it up, <laughs> I mean, you're literally just covered with fish goo from head to toe. Yeah. And I was like, this is the wrong, I'm in the wrong spot. You're in the wrong spot. <laughs> <laughs> but I was landing, I mean, we were all landing fish at the end of the, at the end of our, at the end of the day. I it's amazing. You got, you got really well at, at casting. Yeah, at casting. Now, listen, I bought something on Amazon that I haven't showed you or told you yet. It's a little circle, plastic circle dish. Okay. That helps your net spread out. I've never heard of that or seen that. I'll show it to you. You'll have to check I'll that out. I'll show it to you after we get done with this. But it's, I watched videos on it and I was like, dude, I think one of my subscribers commented and said, you need this. That's cool. And I started watching I'll have to check that like, out yeah. for next year. And then when we get done, when we got done fishing, the best part is the three of us floating out <laughs> on that rubber raft with, so, with 80 some fish in there. How big is your little dinghy? It's eight foot six inches. It's 260 centimeters. So that thing at high tide, we still had to jump out in certain spots and pull it up into the river because the river was yeah. still low. It's a two person dinghy. It's a two person dinghy and you had three good sized adult men in it. With well, that's going yeah. in. Yeah, and that would have been <laughs> roughly 120 times three. Yeah. So 360 pounds of fish. Yeah. That was, so the tide had gone down when we got yeah, that fish. Yeah, it was in. pretty skinny. So we had to like just basically push it over some of the little pebble, you know, the river, the yeah. creek bottom bed. Clean the bottom off. Yeah, we cleaned some of the barnacles off. Yeah. And, uh, got it back out to the boat. But when we got into some deeper water, we all just jumped on it and let the, 
let the current take that's, us out. Tech. That's the easy way to go. I mean, it's interesting to watch people at Sweetheart Creek. I always get a kick out because everybody's got their own system on how to get the fish off the river system and get it back to their boat. I seen a lot of drums, a like lot barrels of drums. out there. So I did the drum a couple years ago. Yeah. Mandy and I um, and her son, we took the drum and we were way up the river and we loaded the drum up, cinched it down and we actually pushed it down the river. Uh, it worked, but it did get hung up in an area on the other side of the river where some people had to come down and help us out and help did, push it yeah, out. Yeah, they, they got hung up on a like a log jam and then we had to go fetch it. Yeah. And that that was very difficult. The best way the last two years I've done I've taken the dinghy up the little raft and caught the tides just right, and that's the way to do it. Hey, let's talk about gear too. Now, this ain't to make fun of your buddy, but you want to have good gear. Who was your buddy that came with the with the super, I don't know. They may have been Grundons, I don't know. But basically, his no, he said chest he, waders. He said he bought the cheapest pair he could find. <laughs> that dude, and it was just split all over. Yeah, he might as well have been in the skivvies. <laughs> he was, he yeah. was just soaking wet. Man. Yeah, he was so. I've got film of that, so yeah. I'll put that in there. That's cool. I was like, holy hell, man! But anyway. and he's a veteran down there too. He's been down there multiple times. <laughs> he's like, I'm gonna get these. Ten dollar. Yes. Ten dollar. Well, we talked about it on a couple videos ago. When you come to Alaska, what did you say once? You said it perfectly. Buy, buy once, once, cry once. Yeah. Buy once, cry once. Yeah. Buy the good gear when you can. Yeah. So. And then her mom has a saying. Diana, my wife's mom, she says, um, "There's never bad weather in Southeast Alaska. Only bad gear." That's true. So. The first year I went down to Sweetheart Creek, I took a buddy of mine down there, and I had those neoprene, cold weather, the kind waders, the kind that Olmstead had. had. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I was miserable. Those weren't great, but they're hot. Oh man, they're hot. hiking through the woods with that barrel. Yeah. Oh, I was sweating. So now I've got the the fly fishing waders, you know. Yeah. Uh, what is it, Sims or something like that? And they yeah. breathe a little bit. That's the ticket. You have That's those. what we got. That's yeah. what you use. Well, we started off with the neoprenes, but in the winter, they work great. But in the summer, yeah. man, you're dying. They're just yeah. so hot. It's, it was a game changer. Yeah. It was worth every penny to get those. Yeah. I only use them a couple times a year, but. They're, well, I use them all the time. Yeah, out here you do, yeah. on and off the bow, for yeah. sure. I mean, literally, I, I go through a set of those probably every two years because the the little socks get holes in them and you can only oh, shoot them so much. And, sure. Yeah. So we got the fish off the river and the boat was out there on anchor. So we got, we got back to the boat and on the landing craft, we were able to drop the bow door down and we just set up a processing station. Yeah. That worked out really well. Yeah. No, we, we, we weren't going to process. I mean, we did process, but we weren't going to do like, we a, had to, we had to belly them. We had to, yeah. Them. Yeah. Get the guts out. And yeah. then pack them with ice. Yeah. We did all that on the boat. And and the same thing. So the couple, the, the group that was before us, like you said, you can only keep 25 per person. So they came back and was like, hey, we've got like three fish over our limit. Do you guys want them? We were like, yeah. And then when we left, who was it that originally counted that miscounted? I can't remember their names. I think it started with. Steve Funk. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, we're, we're short 12. We're short 12. We're short right. 12 fish. So we went back and, and tried to reclaim our, our uh, positions. Yeah, we, knocked our, <laughs> we told our friends we need to get in there and get our fish. Hey, we need, so they, they were and also they were, helping. They and, were like pitching us fish too. Yeah, and then they started getting tired because yeah. it's a workout. So we tap, they had to tap out for a minute. And yeah, we, we got, got our 12. We got our 12 and out we went. Yeah. So it was good. I'm glad we went back, though. Yeah, yeah. that was plenty of fish for everybody. Literally, That's tough counting fish. You know, yeah. you had all the fish in the dinghy on the stringers. Just one, two, three, you know. It's just like... <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, when that when that stringer went in the water, oh, and I man. was like, <gasps> oh, I go, Steve's going to be mad at me. <laughs> the look on your face is like, we got problems. We got problems, buddy. It all, it all works out. Yeah. 
So anyways, uh, like I said, I'm sorry we don't have the footage for that, but man, next year I got I bought a new GoPro, a chest harness. I'm gonna I'm gonna give everybody a GoPro, so at least we'll get. Even if only one camera catches the footage, we'll have it. Yeah. Because it's worth documenting. I mean, it was epic. It's the annual trip down there. Yeah, dude. I, yeah. I had a blast. It's a great spot down there. So, we also... Anything else you want to talk about, Sweetheart Creek? You know, it's... Throughout the Alaskan summers, uh, there's, there's the time frames in the year that bring different events, and that Sweetheart Creek is one of them. That's usually at the tail end of July, 1st of August. Because it's just a short window for the sockeye. That's what we were catching with sockeye fish. Um, I always look forward to that. Yeah. yeah. That's a great trip down there. It and takes a little bit to get there. I mean, it's a workout. Uh, but it sure is fun to do it with friends. And now deer season is open for females only. Soon to be males. Yeah, September days, right? 15th. Uh, um, both males and females and duck seasons coming up duck maybe. seasons coming up as well so, I think that's coming up on the first or second of September I think it switches every so many years once yeah, it's the first once it's the fifth that's what I've heard so, and know. I'm looking out the window here and I I see the deer grounds out there yeah we're gonna be paddling across that <laughs> waterway here before you know it, the rifle in our hand so hopefully we can bring a video yeah with that yeah, it's it's much easier trying to film other people doing stuff than it is trying to film yourself doing stuff. So that's why I'm glad um, Steve and Steve. That's why I call them Captain Funk and Captain Steve because they're both Steves. It gets confusing. The wife calls me <laughs> Captain Funk too. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I also, while I have Captain Funk here, um, Steve, Captain Steve's wife... Um, her brother wrote a book. Yeah. And we both read the book. It's a and great... I, I read the book before I even knew that was her brother. I had never heard about the book until our neighbors down here, uh, Ron and Pam, um, gave me the book to read. Yeah. And it's a great book. It's called South Shelter. By Jay Beetle. By Jay Beetle. Yeah. So Janet is, her maiden name is Beetle. And so uh, I told her that I really, I mean, it's a book about South Shelter, Shelter Island. And that's an island close to, close to us. And um, I said that, you know what? This was for our 10,000 subscribers. I wanted to give a book away. And so I go, maybe your brother would sign a book. And he handles his books like I handle my YouTube channel. He's like, I don't want nobody to read my book. <laughs> and I'm like... I don't want nobody to watch my YouTube channel. <laughs> I actually, I actually talked to Jay oh, a week and a half ago on the phone about his property on Cell Shelter, and I said, "Hey, Jay, I, I read your book," and he goes, "Did it put you to sleep?" <laughs> <laughs> I said, "No, I couldn't put it down. It makes me want to live out here year round oh, yeah. with you guys." Yeah. So, oh, the things that you and jay and the other people that live on the islands year round go through in the winter months is just uh it's uh plenty of stories to be had it's funny i was talking to captain steve and janet and he said yeah my brother uh has somebody coming up to look at his property and they uh said they wanted to move up here because they watched the youtube channel called <laughs> An Alaska homestead. An Alaska homestead. I think, or my Alaska dream, one yeah. of two. So yeah, it's funny. I don't, I don't. It's hard for me to comprehend the reach that I can get, but I'm, I'm thankful for it, and I'm glad that I bring amusement to some people. But anyways, to say thank you, this was for our ten thousand subscribers. We're now at twenty thousand subscribers. Oh wow! So uh, I'm giving away three books. And so all you need to say in the comments is like, um, thanks for the ride. If you made it this far to the, to the video, all you got to say is thanks for the ride. There's a program I can type in and search out for thanks for the ride. And to get all those comments together, I do a randomizer picker. That way it's all fair. And it'll pick three people and we'll, we'll give out the books. We'll just need, I'll contact you with, uh, get your mailing address. And I've also, um, I'm getting some hats and shirts and stickers made. So I've got the, the Teespring or Spring down below. 
Um, they don't do embroidery hats. They only do printed on hats. So I'm getting some embroidered hats done as well. So if you're interested, let me know. Stay tuned and I'll get some of that out for sale too. Uh, I appreciate you guys on this journey that we're on. Thank you to Captain Funk for uh, sitting here with me today and talking about our epic trip down in Sweetheart Creek. And we'll see you guys next week. Many more adventures to come. That's right. We're just getting into the fall season. <laughs> Listen, get a cup of coffee, strap <laughs> in. It's going to be a wild ride. It is going to be a wild ride this fall. <laughs> That's it. All right. We'll see you next week.